For this video, I want to show you a new tool that I've been playing with. It's an open source GUI based FPGA uh, designer, builder, uploader tool. Um, it's called Ice Studio. So if you want to see what it's, it can do for yourself, go to icestudio.io and you can download it for Linux, Mac, and Windows. But um, just to give you a little, little image here before we jump into the tool, you know, you can actually create your FPGA design using um, visual blocks. And you can kind of drag these blocks and connect them together, similar to something called LabVIEW if you've ever used LabVIEW. Um, and it's just an interesting way to program. Um, and uh, I was playing with it, and it's pretty neat. So if you want to, if you're for your beginner, you want to play with something and, and not really start writing any code out of the gates and just see what FPGAs can do, this is an excellent way to get started. Um, and I've, I've had some fun playing with it. You know, I love visual things and dragging, drop, drop, dropping things in and clicking and adding wires. So um, it's been fun. Um, and the best part is that it works directly out of the box with the Go board. So if you buy an FPGA board from nanland.com, the Go board, um, this will work right with that because um, it uses Lattice and, a Lattice FPGA, and those are part of the open source tool chain that this uh, Ice Studio project utilizes. So it's a it's a GitHub project. It's it's all open source stuff. You can you, you actually see the code yourself, and you can edit it. And if you feel so inclined, contribute to the project. Um, but yeah, it's, I've been pretty happy with it so far. So if, let's open it up and take a look at it here. All right, first thing I'll say is if you're on Windows and you wanna get this done for yourself, um, I had some problems with the default installation. I had to get the nightly build. Uh, so 0.5.1 was the one that worked for me. 0.5.0 was had some issues with it. Um, but once you install it, download it and install it, you're greeted with this. Um, kind of blank blank canvas here. Uh, I selected the Nanland Go board. As you can see, there's a number of boards here that, that work out of the box. Um, I'm not familiar with all of these boards, but um, HX8K, HX1K, these are lattice uh, FPGAs that, uh, this, that this particular set of tools is compatible with right out of the box, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of the open source movement is, you know, people can add, I didn't add this here, uh, somebody else did, and I appreciate their efforts. Um, so, yeah, so let's see, in order to actually program the um, the boards, you kind of got to run through a couple things. You do need to get the tool chain installed, that's like the open source tool chain. Um, so you need to get, uh, get that installed, so that's the first step. I already have done that. And then you need to enable the drivers for the FPGA. The way this thing works is it uses um, custom drivers, and so um, you need to enable those drivers. It's a pretty straightforward process. I'll show you kind of briefly what it looks like. So if you go to tools, drivers, click enable, uh, it's some instructions, which I'll just show you what it does. Um, you need to find the board, which in this case, I have a bunch of USB things connected. It's the dual RS-232 HS0. Um, and when you choose this, uh, dual RS-232-HS interface zero, usually it'll say like FTDI something here, and that's the default FTDI uh, drivers. And you need to replace it with this libUSBK driver here. And so you click install driver, and this, this takes a second. And click it. I'll just show you what it looks like. It shows you it's, it's installing the driver. It takes maybe 30 seconds or so. Um, and this is the driver that allows the open source tools to actually program the board directly. So single click, you can uh, program your design right to the board, which is, which is pretty cool. Okay, the driver has been installed successfully. I can close out of this now and I am good to go. It says to unconnect and reconnect the board. Now let's do that. All right. Um, uh, my drivers have been installed, the board's connected. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is just do something simple like uh, blink an LED. So input, I'm just gonna say okay, and I'm gonna choose uh, one of my switches. So let's say switch one. And whenever somebody pushes switch one, I want an LED to blink. And let's choose LED two. Um, I have noticed that if you don't change the defaults out of the gate, there's a little weird thing. So I usually have to like change the default from something else. Uh, and then you're good. And then you can draw new nightly bill. Yay, uh, go away. Uh, and then you can draw wires connecting switch one to LED one. So this is a very simple program. Uh, let's verify that it's okay. Verification done. We can build it. And sometimes you have errors in the build. Um, this one worked successfully, but if you do have errors, I have found that usually um, this view command output here can show you more information about what could be going wrong with your particular build. 
Um, so, and it, it also shows you some, some interesting information. So I, I kind of have this up and just sitting in the background looking in case I'm curious about what's going on. Uh, and in this particular design, it shows you down here on the bottom kind of your overall utilization. I didn't really use anything except for a couple IO um, because it's just connecting an input to an output. Pretty sweet. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead. Uh, I built it. Now let's upload it to the device. And it's literally as simple as clicking the upload button and upload is done. And I will all right, it's been programmed, and now if I'm pushing switch one, what do you know, LED one lights up, and the other switches don't do anything because those haven't been programmed. All right, pretty cool. I created another example already where um, you can add a debounce circuit in here. So I've, I've uh, the previous one didn't have a debounce circuit, but for debouncing, for those of you who don't know, switches are mechanical, they flap back and forth, and they can have these glitches inside of them. And to get rid of those glitches is something called debouncing. Um, so I built one here where I have a clock uh, being driven uh, to, into the debounce circuit, which is required to drive this circuit. And your switches now go into, I have switch one, switch two, and switch three, all driving LED one, two, and three. I also have them going out to the PMOD connector just because I was messing with that. Um, and you can go ahead and upload this one and boom, click of a button, it gets programmed, upload done. And now if I'm pushing switch one, the debounce filter is working, the clock is working, and LEDs one, two, and three are lighting up. One last example to show you that I was playing with, more complicated one, uh, using a ROM. So you can use uh, actual read-only memory, um, and you can kind of do more complicated designs with it. So I'll just walk through this briefly here. Let me bring this over here to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, what this one is doing is it's lighting up the seven segment display with, uh, it's counting up the seven segment display on the Go board, starting from zero all the way to F uh, and, and looping in a pattern. Uh, so the way this is working is uh, I actually leveraged one of the examples that kind of ships with the Ice Studio project and manipulated it for the Go board to make it um, use the seven segment display. So it uses this prescaler, which basically divides the clock down by some, by some number. In this case, it divides it down by 22 to make it slow enough for the human to actually see it, what's happening. Uh, and then it, there's, this is some custom, so you can actually write custom Verilog code in this tool itself. Um, and along with other, the other things that are built into it. So there's like muxes and AND gates and things like that built into this thing, um, flip flops. Uh, but you can also just have uh, actual code. So you can drag a code block and it'll ask you for input ports, output ports, and any parameters you want to add. So in this case, we have an input port of a clock and an output port of value three down to zero. And basically whenever the clock uh, has a positive edge, the value will increase by one. That drives the address bits of this read-only memory block here. And the read-only memory block is just this uh, pretty simple, you know, if there's a ROM file attached, which is this parameter into this code block here, then read mem h, which is the hex, re hex read memory of that ROM file, which is this, this table that I'm generating, that's being loaded in here, and load that into this ROM, which is your actual memory uh, right here. This is your ROM memory. So it's a six down to zero, zero to 15. So it, it gets instantiated into a block RAM. I do believe this becomes a block RAM inside of the FPGA when you build it. Uh, the A, which is your address, is the index into your ROM. And that generates uh, this D output, which is a seven bit output, which comes out here. So you, you know, for your input, if you double click it, your input ports can be specified here, your clock and your address, your output ports, and then any parameters you have there. So that's where that all comes from. The data output then gets driven to a seven segment display, which is just a, a, a block. Uh, and then each one of the outputs has one of the bits of this array, seven seg, six down to zero. So I have seven segment A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, are the individual um, LEDs of the seven segment display. And then this table here, I, lo I went to Wikipedia. I was wiki seven segment display. 
and uh, so Wikipedia has a good article about seven segment displays. I did a Go board project about this, but if you load if you load in if you have a A to G seven segment display, you can load these hex values here in this column, and that will generate all of your digits zero through F. So I'm kind of running through this pretty quickly because most of it's I want to just show off the tool and not so much the the code. Um, so here's the table that, that that Wikipedia table there, and let's go ahead and verify that this is good. Verification, build it. Very good, and we'll upload it. All right, and now if we look at the Go board, we are seeing uh, the A0 through F incrementing on the seven segment display. Pretty easy, pretty fun. I got that project running pretty quickly. So, yeah, this is a this is pretty cool. Um, there are definitely some bugs with it. It's definitely like in a beta version. Um, I found a couple issues and just some weird things. Um, but the, there's an active group that is kind of maintaining it, and so it is getting better. And if you're interested in checking it out, I do recommend you uh, you check it out because it's a fun way to program uh, with open source visual based tools. So hope you enjoy that. I will say one last thing: if you do want to go back to just doing your basic, uh, you know using Verilog code and using um, the diamond programmer to program the Go board, you do need to disable the drivers. So uh, the way to do that is it shows you find the FPGA device and then uninstall the driver. So it gives you a little bit of tutorials, but I'll just run through it. Uh, it shows up here in Windows anyway, libusbk devices, and you can just uh, click uninstall device here. And then that'll say, are you sure you want to do that? And you say, yeah. And then now, now the uh, Ice Storm uh, sorry, Ice Studio will no longer talk to the Go board. You need to reinstall the drivers again. And I think it does show up. I might need to unplug it and plug it back in, but it'll it'll show back up under here when I plug it back in. Uh, so you can uninstall drivers and reinstall them to your heart's content to jump back and forth between the tools. So uh, shout out to the folks who are maintaining this project uh, on GitHub, open source uh, project. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy working with the tools. Thanks.